Hey everybody, it's Christian and today I'm showing you how I've migrated my infrastructure as code tools and setup to open tofu, the new open source alternative to HashiCorp's Terraform that's currently making waves in the community. If you've been following the changes with HashiCorp's licensing for Terraform, you know things have shifted from being a free and open source model to a business source license that already happened in late 22 and created plenty of discussions and concerns among users. And if you're wondering why the hell it took me so long to make the switch from Terraform to OpenTofu, well, there are two reasons for this and I just want to quickly explain. First, the license change in Terraform actually didn't have such a huge impact on us end users, to be honest. Yeah, you can still use Terraform for free if you like. And second, I was a bit skeptical about this new project, OpenTofu. Who knows if it will become the widely accepted solution in the industry? Because let's be honest, they are free and open source enthusiasts. They like to grow crazy about stuff like this when it happens. But just because a tool that you're using is making a license change, which doesn't really affect you, I mean, this isn't enough, in my opinion, to immediately migrate all of your production environments and that's why I was a bit relaxed about it and I took my time to see how both projects Terraform and OpenTofu evolve and how they diverge in the future. But after more than one and a half year since the license change of HashiCorp I think we can definitely say that OpenTofu is consistently working hard to become this widely adopted alternative to Terraform and it has made huge progress and many more users seem to switch to it now and even though they didn't really tell the actual numbers of the user base yet. They really got a lot of traction recently. They got over 20,000 stars on GitHub, over 150 contributors, and they are still 99% compatible with the Terraform project, implementing nearly all of the new features HashiCorp is adding after the license change. And furthermore, they regularly even come up with their own new features that are not existing in Terraform, mainly driven by the community and users of this tool. And I just love this aspect so much because people that use this tool can actually say what features they'd like to see in the future in OpenTofu and it's not just because a few big customers of HashiCorp pay for new Terraform features. I know this is quite a long introduction but this is a whole thought process that made me finally switch into it but I want to make this clear before we start with the tutorial so just because I'm switching from Terraform to OpenTofu it doesn't mean that you have to stop using Terraform immediately and again Terraform is still available for free and it's a great tool that is still used in the industry. Also the way you work with OpenTofu is basically 99% the same. So it's just a different tool and a different backend platform that you might see in some of the terminal commands that I'm using from now on. And speaking about tools that I'm using and what you might see changing in future videos, let's talk about browsers. I know everybody has their own personal preference and favorite when it comes to browsers, but for a few weeks I've been playing around with Opera that recently got a brand new release called Opera 1R2 that has many cool features. It now has an absolutely gorgeous look, supporting dynamic themes for a truly modern browsing experience. It also comes with a new player integration that lets you control your music and videos without interrupting your other activities, a nice video pop-out feature that is just great for watching YouTube videos, or what is also super useful to me when I'm working on video tutorials or software projects and I need to have multiple documentation pages open at the same time, the new split-screen mode. There are many of these great ideas that I think make your day-to-day -day workflow a lot easier, not to forget the intuitive tab grouping because tech nerds like us we love to have a hundred different tabs open in the browser. This is a an outstanding feature and it also has new AI on board. The AI command line feature let you ask questions while it's staying on the same web page. It can even summarize the web page that you're currently browsing or you can continue the prompt in chat mode where you have the context of the web page. This is really a useful feature in a browser to me and it also does image generation and image recognition. So I absolutely love the browsing experience in Opera so far and you should definitely try it out yourself. Of course as a browser this is completely free without any catch so just download it see if you like it of course you will find a link to it in the description of this video down below all right so now let's go back to my other favorite tool open tool for and let us go in a bit more detail on this don't worry we'll go through using the tool and migrating a terraform state file to open tofu in a minute i think it is just important to say that open tofu and terraform are feature wise very similar until the version 1.6 but in future releases, there will be a few changes or new things in OpenTofu existing that might not be there in Terraform and vice versa. 
One of the biggest questions you might have now is what happens to the Terraform registry because this is the heart and core of the Terraform infrastructure as code tool so that you can integrate and support third-party providers and plugins and connect Terraform to basically any other system that you like. And OpenTOFO also has something similar that is called the OpenTOFO registry. And just because those two projects are so similar to each other, you will find 99% of the Terraform registry plugins in the OpenTOFO registry as well. So for example, if you're searching for something like DNS, you can see that even the HashiCorp's DNS provider is in here and you can use it exactly the same way like in Terraform. So I would say like the vast majority of tools that are existing in the Terraform registry also exist in the OpenTOFU registry. Yes, there might be the one or another tool that is a bit different. And of course, vendors and users can write providers for just OpenTOFU, so that are not existing in Terraform. But honestly, I haven't seen many of these. So at least the providers that I'm using for automating my DNS records or automating Proxbox, even if you don't find that specific provider here in the OpenTOFU registry, you can just import it the same way like it is described in the Terraform registry. And most most of the time it will run without any problems. However, it is always a good idea to follow this migration guide. So this is very specific depending on which version you're using uh, in uh, Terraform. So I have used the migration guide from version 1.8 of Terraform to OpenTOFO, but I think it is very similar. So I will just use the updated uh, guide and let's go through a very simple example project. So in this uh, project, I'm using a simple DNS provider. This is the provider from HashiCorp that I'm using to manage and automate the creation of my DNS records in my local home lab. By the way, if you haven't watched the video, I also put you a link to that in the description box. So here I have the Terraform file that defines resources. I have the provider files where I'm creating the variable and defining the settings for the providers. So this is how your projects should look like. Maybe just a bit bigger and more resources managed here. What you should always do if you're migrating these tools is prepare a disaster recovery plan. So that's the first step or the preparation step. So if anything goes wrong with OpenTOFO that you can roll back or go back to Terraform if you need. And yeah, if you've done uh, the backup, you need to make sure that you have applied all of the changes in your Terraform project. So there are no difference between what is defined in the code and with your a real infrastructure. So when you execute the command, you should see there are no changes because I've already added uh, this resource. And then you just have to download and install OpenTOFU. Just follow the instructions for installing it on Linux uh, or Mac. I think on Mac, you can just install it through Homebrew. It's very simple. And yeah, then again, backup your Terraform state file and of course the code files. So you have a valid backup of everything. And you should see those files in here. You have the .terraform folder. So that is where the provider files are downloaded. You have the log file and the Terraform state file. So those are all of the important files that you should definitely backup. The Terraform state file contains basically the database of all the resources that you have created in your Terraform project. So this is very important. You also need to make sure that you're not running into some weird issues with some of these small differences between OpenTOFO and Terraform. So mostly this just involves encoded tier vars and encoded expressions. Most of you guys will not use these features. I'm not using them either, so that's not a big problem. What you should take care of though is when you're using backends. So for example, if you're uh, storing the TF state file not on your local device, but in GitLab, for example, or maybe on an S3 bucket, there might be some other steps involved that you have to do. But uh, for the local projects, it's very simple. You can just uh, initialize the OpenTOFO project and that automatically will do the migration for you. So when you execute the TOFO command and you just initialize the project, this will then download the Terraform provider again and install it with the OpenTOFO system. And now if you try to execute a Terraform command, again, you can see there is an inconsistent dependency log file, uh, but you can just use the TOFO command just like Terraform. So when you execute plan, it should already know that this resource is existing on my infrastructure so you don't need to delete and recreate your resources again. This is really really simple and just like a an in-place update so to speak. Here it also says even though there are no changes in your infrastructure you should run the Terraform apply command so let's just do that and then you can upgrade to the latest OpenTOFO version. So if you're using an older version of Terraform you probably should migrate to the OpenTOFO version 
that is equivalent with that version so that you make sure that it is all compatible and working. And after that, you can upgrade your tool and initialize the upgraded providers. And if you want to roll back to Terraform and you have any problems, you can still try to do the Terraform init command and do basically the same uh, just the other way around and then it should also work again. However, it's good to have a backup. If anything fails, you can just restore your old files and it should be okay. Uh, by the way, you should also take care of that if you migrate your local environments and tools, that you should, of course, also migrate all of your CI CD pipelines so that you're not using Terraform on the one environment and OpenTOFO on the other environment. That, again, as you have seen, will not work. So you have to migrate all of your environments if you're doing this step. But it's actually pretty simple. For example, when I go to my DNS project, you can see the uh, CI code that I've created. By the way, don't worry, this will be a topic in a future video. It will take me a bit more time to research this and yeah, make a great tutorial about it, but GitLab CI CD will definitely be a big topic on this channel. And yeah, as I can see here, I'm also using the tofu command in all of the um, CI CD pipeline commands here as well. And you can basically just use it the same way. You just need to make sure that if you're using any Docker images that spawn a new runner process, that you, of course, don't use Terraform. And you can just use the official OpenTOFO Docker images for your CI/CD pipelines as well. That's all about OpenTOFO. Uh, one thing you might ask yourself now is, okay, Christian, so this all seems nice. You can easily migrate and so on. But should I actually do this, migrate from Terraform to OpenTOFO for all of my environments? Honestly... I can just say there's no hurry to migrate in most of the cases, yeah? Because if you might be a reseller that has been affected by the initial license change of Terraform, well, you already know about it and you already have migrated. So this probably is only important to people that are still using it in home lab or maybe in some smaller environments. So the impact of the license change is very minimal if it ever has any impact on you. And also the new features OpenTOFO has, there are not really so many features that would justify the switch on its own. I think this is more a question of what you like to support personally. So do you want to use a tool that is free and open source and only community driven? And then I think OpenTOFO is an amazing infrastructure as code project that you should use. Yeah? Terraform on the other hand, this is more enterprise ready. It's more used in the IT industry and so on. And if you're in a company that uses HashiCorp products, maybe Terraform cloud services in HashiCorp vault and so on, Terraform might be just the right tool that you're using in this environment, but it doesn't really hurt to check out OpenTOFO and play around with it in your home lab or on your workstation. The cool thing is you don't need to learn an entirely different platform or tool. It is the same syntax and 99% of the features are the same. But yeah, these are my thoughts about it. I'm happy to hear yours, so please let me know in the comments what do you think about OpenTOFO and Terraform. As always, thank you so much for watching. A big thanks goes out to all of the supporters on Patreon and YouTube. And don't forget to like and subscribe. I'm gonna check you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.